welcome back to What One Thing. This is JT Long. I am Vice President and Content Director here at Smart Meetings, and this is a special IMAX version. I brought in some relationship experts to talk about the right way, the wrong way, and fresh ways to meet new people and really build meaningful relationships. So I think probably most of you know um, Auntie Kate. Kate Pate is Vice President and Global Engagement at Terramar DMC. They're a wonderful partner of Smart Meetings. We appreciate them so much. Also, Director of the Search Foundation Board and does wonderful things there to help planners in need. Welcome, Kate. Thank you for having me. And I love that you used Auntie Kate, my favorite <laughs> title of all. <laughs> And and two A two A Dep is senior meeting planner at CWT Meetings and Events. I'm going to tell you a secret about Tui and Kate. So back when the pandemic first started in probably late March of uh, 2020, I had Kate and Tui on a webinar that was one of the highest attended webinars that we ever had. In fact, we were worried because we had gone over our one. 1,000 person limit. I think like 1,600 people had registered to to attend and uh, it was going to start cutting people off. So she is always someone that I invite when I want to have important, meaningful conversations. Yay. Hello. Hello. (laughs) So we were Uh, at a conference actually in Las Vegas uh, a month or so ago. It was our culinary experience and we started chatting. I think it was at Area 15, the way that you do. And we, we talked about the difference between relational versus transactional encounters. And I'm always one that loves to define my terms before we have a conversation, right? I think one of the things we discussed is that it's not good or bad to be relational versus transactional. There's a place for each. For me personally, when I'm at the grocery store, I'd rather make it transactional. I don't want the checkout person asking me and commenting on every single item that I bought unless they want to see pictures of my grandbabies, I just want them to check me out and then uh, go on. But there are times when I want to have a deeper conversation and a deeper relationship. How, how do the two of you, maybe Kate, you start us off. How do you define the difference between relational versus transactional encounters? Well, relationship driven ones, you know, it's you're in it for the long haul, basically. And that's really what our industry is. It's, it's not just that one time, that quid pro quo sort of transaction to it all. And I like to define it being very transparent. And I always talk about people laugh. I talk about my hats. Which hat am I wearing? When we're talking, I'm a, and Tui's making the hand signals now at me, which is so funny that I take off my search hat and I'm putting on my Terramar hat, or I'm taking off my Terramar hat and putting on my friend hat so that I'm defining the conversation. Am I coming to you as your peer, as your friend? And I think that just really helps to cut through and make it crystal clear so there is no miscommunication or expectation expectations that aren't met. Absolutely. And transactional is very specific. You have a goal in mind. You're focused on if anything gains, whether that's knowledge or additional business. And I did some research. The opposite of transactional encounters is transformational which is very similar to relational. And so, of course, right, when I, even jumping on this recording, I immediately saw Kate and JT and excited. I wish I could, I'd given you all a virtual hug and we really much dive into more deeper, meaningful conversations that is long-term. And I think that when you have that human approach, you're able to carry on conversations for future smart meeting conferences to come. <laughs> and and I think that is very important that what you pointed out is it needs to be transparent as we're talking about our trans are transparent and have that disclosure beforehand and say, hey, right now I'm talking to you as someone who wants to get a participant on my podcast, right? <laughs> Versus maybe some other. And I think that's where I get rubbed the wrong way is as I said, I don't mind transactional relationships as long as they don't pretend that it's a relationship 
and then they make it into a transaction, right? Like if you're going to be transactional, just be transactional. Don't pretend that you're something else, right? It's the pretending. It you're is. Not it's it's okay. that transparency piece of all of it, someone pretending. And you have to communicate it out because if you have the expectation of a transaction happening from that conversation and you don't tell somebody that's the expectation, like, oh, I expect you to send me business. I expect you to come photograph my event, whatever that expectation in your head is, if you don't communicate that, you will be disappointed because no one's going to meet your expectations if you don't define what they are. Absolutely. And to build on that, actually, even I thought about it and I said, why do we have such a great connection? And it comes down to also just being genuine. I know, Kate, I've asked her in the past, it was a smart meetings question. How would you describe me in one word? I thought she was going to say witty. Instead, she said genuine. And I'm still honored by that because when you show up authentically you, you are transparent. There is no potential. What does she or he actually want from me? It's just there. And that creates a, a safe space to be able to then get to know that individual and have those conversations. That reminds me of, there's a photo that I've used before presenting and it's this guy. And I literally had Googled at the time, car salesman. And the first one that popped up and it, it looks just like a used car salesman, the kind of person that you would avoid. And I tell the story with it because there's someone that I ran into, it was in Vegas and he's notorious for it. He walks into a room and you hide behind tables. Like he, you so much don't want to speak to the this person because it is only transactional and he's so in your face about it constantly. And yes, like sadly, I was one of those people that literally hid behind a cocktail round as he entered a room one time. So <laughs> there's finding the balance. Sometimes transactional is okay, but if that's the only way you live, you know, I, if I walk in a room and people are hiding behind tables, not trying to hug me, I'm doing something wrong. Mm-hmm. And those yeah. are low boys, not even high boys that keep talking. She's getting extra low there. <laughs> Well, I think that uh, that authenticity is important on both sides because not everyone interacts the same way, right? Some people are a little bit less straightforward and maybe have some anxiety around a networking event. I like to say that I take the golden lab approach to relationships in that I want to talk to everyone. So I think everyone wants to play with me, right? So I walk into a room thinking everyone here has something I want to know, right? So I just bound right up and talk to them but not everyone feels that way. And that's their authentic self. And and they need to feel comfortable not trying to pretend to be something that they are. Like if I tried to be shy, it would be really hard for me, right? So I think that understanding that authenticity means something different for everyone means that you take a little bit different approach. Do you agree? It does. And I see you do that a lot, JT, because we do wind up together at a lot of in-person events and all of the smart meetings ones. And I can see how that approach softens when someone's on the side of the room. They're maybe not as engaged. They're nervous to come into it. I'm naturally an introvert, which surprises a lot of people. So sometimes that's me as I'm recharging and getting ready to go into a room. But I, I just see how you handle people differently. And you can be the life of the party and light up that room, or you can be standing and having a conversation on the side and meeting that person where they are. And that's a really special quality to have. And I think in the end, it's about really wanting to know them genuinely, right? And so meeting them wherever they are. You're good at that too, Tui. Oh, thank you. And just to build on that, you mentioned it's a sense of curiosity. And so when you have a sense of curiosity, when you approach a conversation and immediately you think, hmm, why does that individual feel so strongly about that topic? Or, oh, that's very interesting. And so you want to dive deeper. And I think being able, if you're able to be vulnerable, it allows, quotation marks, other people to also, and that's where the genuine connections start and the depth of that connection happens. And so just... Yeah. Approaching with a sense of curiosity has always been, I feel like the reason why I truly connect with others because I'm genuinely curious and I want to know more. And you can always tell when someone isn't about that, but the con- we're not aligned because even straight from the, the get-go, if I can see their eyes glaze over when I introduce myself, I have a unique name and I know if I were to ask what my name is again, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't know. I just, what you did, I just kind of readapt and okay, now I'm curious what, what's on their mind. 
And if they're looking over your shoulder and around the room and you're like, "Mm, all right, I'm ready to move the next person too. Mm -hmm. And you can gracefully do that. That was one of the things we've talked about a few times when people are in conversation and maybe you're sensing that they don't want to be there. It's okay to call that out and give someone grace or step away from a conversation that you may not want to be in. Uh, Depending on my level of comfortability and how well I know someone is really how I I do that. Um, You know, if you see someone looking around, like you said, I'll ask them out right. Like, oh, is there someone I can help you find or someone you're looking for that you'd like to meet? Or if someone's distracted and I know them well enough, if it was Tui looking around the room, I'd be like, girl, you're you're distracted right now. Go, go find who you need to I'm find and I'll meet food. back up. <laughs> <laughs> but if you don't know the person as well, and you don't feel like they're part of the conversation or invested in it, you can just as easily say, Oh, pardon me. I just saw someone I'm looking for walk in the room. I'm going to go greet them. It was wonderful to speak with you. And you can gracefully exit a conversation. You don't, you don't need to be trapped in a conversation if you're not both enjoying it. Or lie that you have to go to the bathroom or relieve the babysitter or... (laughs) It is never a lie if I have to go to the ladies' room. That is my trip tonight. (laughs) Bathroom buddy, I got you. (laughs) As people are getting ready for all the cocktail parties at IMAX, uh, we often, about once a year, we have Deborah Fine, who's wonderful, the the fine art of small talk. She comes and speaks at our events and and she often uh, has tips for how to start a conversation to take responsibility for for getting a conversation started that's open-ended enough that people have something to grab onto but but not trapping people and and also graceful enough that you're not embarrassing yourself for them so instead of saying hey how's your marriage to someone who maybe just got divorced or you or fired if you ask about their job she says catch me up on your life right? And then they get to choose where they want to start. Do you have some icebreaker tips for how to have a conversation with someone that you maybe haven't seen in a while or are just meeting? Yes, I do. Because of course you go through your name and I don't know, job title, maybe talk about the weather, but to, on alongside that, uh, I ask, it's a leadership prompt. What's been on your mind lately? And let them choose and steer the direction of the conversation. Uh, it's anything but are you busy? That's the <laughs> worst question. Or I'm and so one, busy. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, when I, I always have a reply back to that when they say, oh, are you, you've been really busy. I say, actually, that's not even a term I use anymore. I say productive. So, yes, I've been having overly productive days, but you can be busy, but not productive. True that. TikTok has proved that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What do you do when the, to open up a, a conversation? Frankly, I've stolen a couple of your opening questions because I feel like you're the queen of asking a question that's going to disarm somebody and it's not what they expect in the best possible way. So I always try and ask something that's unique along those lines that they want to expect. But I also try to connect people because, like I said, I, I can be a bit of an introvert and sometimes the small talk does not come easy to me. Or suppose I'm about to go speak. I tend to get into my own head at that time and I prepare myself to get ready to go on stage and present. So I'm probably not not the most fun person in the world to talk to in those 10 minutes leading up to it. So I like to introduce other people and connect them. Like if if the two of you didn't know each other and we were standing around a cocktail table, I would be like, oh my gosh, JT, have you met my good friend, Tui? She is a meticulous planner, wildly creative. She is the Virgo to my Capricorn, but she's also my travel foodie buddy. You two will get along so well. Tui, this is JT with Smart Meetings, outstanding professional. She is the guru of the Smart Meetings family, loves reading. She always gives me the best books. We trade our favorite Venn diagrams and you'll be in forever if you ask for a picture of one of the sweet grandbabies. <laughs> oh, hey, you're so good. <laughs> like There were just five or six different things in there that now you two can go, oh, grandbabies, tell me more. Or, ooh, you're into astrology, Virgo, Okay. And and if I were to introduce Kate, I would definitely say she is a woman who wears many hats and all of them beautifully and elegantly. She connects people and she really has a passion for this industry and the people in it and will do whatever it takes to help people be successful. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I appreciate that. That was very kind. 
that is actually one of our uh, touch points at Smart Meetings uh, and something that Marin believed, our, our founder, Marin Bright, believed strongly in is that by celebrating the excellence in all the people around us, that that is how we inspire more excellence. So the, the language of Smart Meetings is spreading around positive affirmations, is complimenting people. And if you don't know anything about someone, you can always say that their shoes are cute because usually they have cute shoes, even if they're now the tennis shoes, right? So, so find something that you admire and tell them while well, you still can. That's a great way to start a conversation. I love that. And finding the glimmers. That's the other thing that I always love with smart meetings is when we're finding those happy moments together. For sure. I love that you use that word, glimmer. And I mean, that's a tip for introducing to people at a networking event that you just did, Kate, is finding the commonality or the interest that other people may have outside of just work and titles. And immediately you can discuss that. I completely forgot JT he used to give me book recommendations all the time during the pandemic. And so <laughs> I'm coming after you again. I need another book. Oh, we have been on a dystopian route here in the office. We've been all reading dystopian books. And here's the crazy thing. They are actually very hopeful, right? In a dystopia, it breaks out. Anyway, that we we could have a whole different podcast about that. I um, love that. I just got off of a beachy read because my brain oh. needed to decompress after a few straight weeks of travel. And I was like, I, I don't have a serious book in me right now. I'm going to act like I'm sitting in the sand, even though I am just sitting in Lake Tahoe. It's fine. Perfect. So one of the things that because we are all planners as well as people who attend events is that we have the power to set up our attendees for success so some of the things that we can do in advance of uh, putting on a conference and bringing people in is kind of identifying who is coming for the first time, getting them to connect either in a virtual experience before, or um, I've seen some fun things. Is it Jabber Yak that is asking questions and then helping people to display their answers and start conversations that way? What are some fun conversation starters that planners can do to make everyone feel better? I love those jabber yak. My mo most recent one, the very top part of it said bills. So everyone assumed I liked playing or paying bills. And I was like, no, the Buffalo bills. I used to live there. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next one was bingo. So it, it doesn't get more random than that. Those are great conversation starters. That's bingo. <laughs> okay. I think about you anytime I think of the bills. I'm on my first ladies fantasy league right now during football season. Other questions to connect people actually not even questions if i know that a persona of a group is introverted i planning it i'll put in interactive games like those mind teasers and you know the, those things just because it gives instead of forcing an interaction it's allowing others to open up an opportunity for tony shay says collision moment of interaction in which then they can have that discussion or help each other solve something. And so it doesn't necessarily have to be articulating. And uh, there's so many ways to communicate and problem solve. And so that's another, especially if I'm planning, I have to figure out the persona of the group and just why they're there. And then from there, you can curate this experience in which, you know, you really deliver and, and plan and design for them. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need to be super intricate like Tui's saying. I, I'm still friends with someone that I met at a conference well over a decade ago where at the opening they gave everyone the wrong name badge and they made sure it was someone you didn't know so you would have to go and hunt down your name badge basically and I'm still friends with her to this day. I looked for <laughs> an hour and a half. I could not find her. I got descriptions of her from like five different people at this event. Finally went on Facebook because I gave up at you know 2011 so I jump onto Facebook and I sent her a message. I found her and I was like, I'm near the macaroni and cheese station. And I just stood there and waited for her to come find me. And we're still buddies. And it cracks us up that that's what brought us together. So it doesn't need to be, you know, overthought over the top. You know, even just the, the badge ribbons that say first time attendee. I love that because I'm going to 
go up to them and ask them, oh, you know, what, what drew you to this event? Or what are you most looking forward to this week? And engage them in some way. The speed bumps are powerful. I love that question of uh, what are you most looking forward to? And I know Tui asks that one as well, because as a planner, when you know what someone's looking forward to, you can make sure that that happens. When I know that one of my clients or someone that I'm attending with has something in mind that's going to be the epitome of success for that that event or that trip, I make sure that happens every single time without a doubt. Nice. That's power. Yeah. And you use it wisely. Surprise and delight. That's our goal, right? (laughs) I can give you actually a little secret in what I do to get conversations started without talking. Kate and I, a thing that we have in common is fashionistas. And so I just pick one accessory piece. It's normally a hat or, you know, just a pair of jewelry. And instantly, just because people are very visual, that's one thing, JC, you mentioned that you can compliment the shoes. And so that I allow other people to kind of start the conversation if they're just passing by. Oh, I like your shoes. Let me tell, I got a great story about these shoes. Let me tell you. And so, (laughs) and, and it just opens it up into, again, more opportunities to connect. And so that's another thing. If you're, if you're nervous or don't typically make that first interaction, that first approach, just be you and wear something that could start a conversation. JT, you've been wearing interesting glasses lately. I love them. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, that was something that Marin started me on. She bought my first pair when we were at the Broadmoor of Peepers. And now, you know, they're like 28 bucks a pop, but I put them all around the house like Easter eggs. And some people say when they meet me, they don't recognize me without my glasses, even though they're just reading glasses. So something that the two of you do that I admire so much and is such a good tip for really building relationships, not having conversations at cocktail parties, but really getting to know people is volunteering on boards, right? Where you're working together with people toward a common goal. How did you first get involved? Maybe two of you start us off um, in some of the boards you're on and what has that experience been like? How do you make sure that that is something that is constructive to your life and not taking over your life? Ooh, it is truly the foundation of my success in my career, being able to volunteer on association, board of directors, on search foundation. I actually, through ILEA back in Las Vegas, ended up planning the search foundation charity event for them. And that's where Kate and I ended up really bonding. I ended up asking for a recommendation to join search. And from there, the connections I've made both professionally and personally and just the, the gain of that bigger picture, it's, I highly encourage it when I speak to young professionals and the next generation of our industry, that's one huge thing. I say you can gain experience through volunteering and those who go above and beyond just from their workload and give to your their time and effort to our industry. Plus it's a great, I mean, you're volunteering, you get to really craft things as your own and whatever area of interest or vol- committee group you're a part of, it really crafts your skill set. And it's just, it's all win, 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 win in my mind there. Okay, I know as our lovely chairwoman of search. <laughs> guide us. If then on the boards of a lot of organizations. And I feel like I've gained something from every single one, but I think you get out of it what you put into it as well. And I'll be the first person that sits and works a registration desk so that I can meet everyone that's coming in the door and they know who I am at the same time. And I've, I've built my network and created those lasting connections with people through that. So I think there's a lot of organizations that help you to build up your career. And then the, the position I sit in now with the Search Foundation, I feel like this is truly my give back to our industry because it is a lot of really strong professionals that are sitting around that table. But when we come to that table, they're you know, it doesn't matter which hats you typically wear. I take off the Terramar hat. I take off all of the other hats and we come to that table, no egos or anything there, just the foundation at the root of it and what's best for that foundation. And I'm so proud of this board to sit on it and it be that true altruistic give back for everybody. So, you know, 
there's an association for everyone and for everything. Oh my goodness, the the amount of groups that are out there. So whatever interests you, go for it. And and don't forget to put the effort in. It, that's really what makes the difference. I mean, I, I wish you could just sign up for a gym and automatically you, you have six pack abs, but no, spoiler alert, you have to actually go. So... <laughs> Same with volunteering. Yep. Yes, exactly. You're going to get out of it what you put into it. It's a very interconnected industry, right? So all of these people, you just end up meeting back again in some other job and some other capacity. And when you've worked together to do something that you're both proud of, that's powerful stuff. Oh, it really is. So you can't have bad blood with anybody. You never know who you're going to work with, who you're going to work for. The industry is so small. We need to remember that. Okay, I was waiting for a Taylor Swift. Cool. I held out for <laughs> almost 30 minutes. <laughs> you did good. You did good. Gold star. <laughs> Teddy knows it all too well. <laughs> it's also the reach, right? When you, especially when you find something in common, you find the association, you're like, okay, well, these are my supplier partners in this one city, this one destination. And you realize with associations, there's, there's a bigger reach. There's a gl- potential global reach there. And so your network just keeps expanding and the beautiful people in your life, you can ex- just, c- the web keeps getting what more integrate and and if if anything in return it makes our community that much smaller it does you know what fun thing i learned about imax because we were talking about that this is our pre-imax leading into imax talk and i wish i could remember who it was a few years ago before we left for imax pre-pandemic and we were discussing pack manning have you heard that term No. So Pac-Manning, everyone remembers what Pac-Man looks like with the mouth on the side. And they say when you're standing around a table networking and talking or even in a group, just always leave a little gap for someone to join you. It's Pac-Manning. You adjust and you let that person in. And then once that new person has felt welcome into the group, you kind of move and adjust a little bit more and create another Pac-Man mouth for somebody else to potentially join you. So it's like we have our friends and the people we know, but if you really want to grow your network and meet new people, and meet more people, leave that space, leave that gap for them to be invited into it. You know, we're, we're going to have our quiet time that we can sit and deep dive anything that we need to about Taylor Swift because Tui's such a fan. But you know, <laughs> I can never believe you said that on air. <laughs> <laughs> I went there. Yeah, you just allow people that space to come in and they will. It's, it's so cool, the people that you meet and just makes people feel more welcome. You know, it's, it's not fun to walk into a room of all closed off conversation. All right, pledge. Pinky swear, we're all going to leave Pac-Man holes at IMEX this year and welcome new people into our circles. I I'm love gonna, it. I love I'm it. I'm going to tag producer, everybody I see doing it. Aww. Our producer, Sarah, is going to do it too. She's going to be at IMEX for the first time this year. Yeah. Where is the booth this year? Um, it is in the back right corner and it's bigger than it's ever been. And we're going to be doing the put your face on the cover of the magazine again. So oh, and I the love Smart Woman Toast. Uh, the Smart Woman Toast is right after the um, Cabo giveaway. There you go. See? So they go to Terramar and then they go to Smart Meetings booth. It's perfect. Your we're going to have a lot of champagne set. flowing. <laughs> <laughs> and Only also non-alcoholic options for people. Don't worry. Zero yes. proof is there. So this is called What One Thing. So we like to end by asking what one thing made the difference in your career and life when it comes to relationships. Okay. okay. I'm getting signaled to go first on this. <laughs> what one thing made my career? Now, I think I had to learn that I need to admit when I'm wrong and fix it immediately. I think that's a not always an easy thing to do. That's in business and in life in general, but to realize if you've missed steps somewhere and then you take the steps to correct that, your your entire person of who you are, your reputation depends on how you follow through something that you may not have done as gracefully as you could have. And I think that's really what's defined me as a person is owning up to anything that that's ever been said or done and working to take the steps to correct it. And that reputation for doing that can actually build a stronger relationship with someone after you make a mistake. What about you, Tui? I am a huge storyteller. And as I get wiser through the years, I would say practicing active listening 
has really not only defined my character, but really allowed others to pick up the mic and share theirs. And it goes back to that curiosity. I just love to know about other people's stories and finding out the reasons and how they show up in the world. And so that to me is just, that's at my core. That's a value of mine that I take into my professional life. I truly cannot do my role without others, that big collaboration, that just spirit, that synergy. And so that truly applies to having a simple conversation with someone at a networking event or calling Kate to ask her just all these questions that have nothing to do with work and we can put on our friend hat. And same thing, JT, it's getting to know you on a personal level and immediately my first question is how's the grandbaby right <laughs> and that, it just builds trust and at the end of the day I know if there's a fire in the kitchen you you two have my back and mm-hmm. never at one at any time did you did you ask how business is going or if I'm busy <laughs> Busy is not a badge of honor. <laughs> JT, are we allowed to ask you your one thing in turn? Yeah. Oh, uh, I would agree very much with Tui is that I just think if you are curious and really care, if you have empathy and you really want the people that you are meeting to be successful and you have conversations based on trying to help them genuinely, that it can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. I love that. I love our conversations. I look forward to so many more at IMAX and beyond. Thank you for taking time out of your productive schedules and coming to to share your nuggets of wisdom about relationships. And uh, we will see you uh, very soon in Las Vegas and all over the country because Kate's going to be with us in Rhode Island and beyond at Arizona. Lots, of, lots more good stuff to come. Thank you to our uh, listeners for taking time out of your schedule. Hopefully this has been helpful for you. And this is What One Thing, a Smart Meetings podcast made just for you. Smart Meetings, What One Thing was produced by Bright Business Media. Visit smartmeetings.com to subscribe to your daily dose of inspiration.